Okay, hello everybody. Sorry, a little bit of a long intro there. I had to, my camera keeps cutting out. No, it keeps showing, but I can't see it. So I've had to do that before where I got to talk and I can't see anything, but it doesn't really hamper me talking. Though I do like to kind of see what I'm, see what I look like when I'm doing it. Okay, we are gonna, I actually just did an Instagram live where I talked about AI a little bit and I kind of want to continue that discussion over here because I was trying to get that one done a little bit quicker. But I want to kind of explore it a little bit more. Um, I'll open the chat up in about 25 minutes, but I wanted to kind of get this out and let's discuss artificial intelligence and what makes a person a person. So this came about because I was listening to something and they talked about being able to take the brain and transplant it into something else to keep people alive forever. So it was human science, it's human science way to say, okay, that's immortality, right? It, it's, it, that's how that's gonna work. And then people will stay alive forever. Now, when I look at that, the, the, the falseness of that statement and from a human perspective, that makes sense. From a human perspective, they would say that that's where your consciousness is. You know, your consciousness is in your brain. Now, I would say from a higher perspective, your consciousness is in your your is is in your field. It's in your energy field. It's not in your brain. <laughs> now, there was also the scientific. Well, I'm going to say fact because you know, from a human perspective, it is a fact that. We only use a certain percentage of our brain. Our, when we're going through our human day, you know, our human only uses so much. That's when we talk about unlocking so many other parts, unlocking, unlocking your ability to comprehend multidimensionality, to be able to comprehend more of what's going on in your field, how you you're going to interpret that. Is your brain interpreting your field, or are you just feeling through your field and not your brain? The way I feel like it goes is you're feeling through your field. The, the brain to me does, it has a function of keeping the body going. It has a function of keeping the body alive. It does have a very small database to keep human memories, you know, here and there. So to me, if you're just going to take, okay, it's just the brain, you know, that's what makes a person a person. And then we have to go into, okay, but doesn't the soul make the person the person? So what would actually be giving you the best representation of that person is it even possible to take that you know from a human perspective and be able to say okay this is now the person there's a lot of stuff going around now where you can get AI to do certain things I saw uh, someone on YouTube did it where they just let AI create a whole video for them we've seen it in movies where people who passed away they kind of bring the car kind of carbon copy of somebody out digitally do it and say okay now like this is him you know, this is this is now going to be you know a representation of that person, but that always brings up you know that I'm going to use morality here because because it kind of comes up in the discussion is that you know is that morally okay? It's not really the person because what makes a person a person? I would also say that the if we look at everything as our field reads it, you know, our field has the capability to comprehend multidimensionality, to comprehend the many aspects of us. Whereas your human brain is only going to see that one aspect of you. It's only going to be a very small snapshot of you. It just the, even if we take it to say, okay, the current life we lead, right? Or that, that's a snapshot of the current life we lead. But is that really a snapshot of the human in totality? And I'm going to use the word human there, but I think I'm going to have to twist that because we're really not even going to be talking about humans. We're talking about us beyond our human aspect. You know, when you start molting, uh, when you start going through your ascension process, you start embodying in your soul, which is outside the body. We've talked a lot about that. Very little of your soul is in the body. <laughs> Very little of your soul is in the body because there's too much human programming in there. The soul can't kind of squeeze in there. So there is some in there, but the more of your soul you embody, the more you clear all the human programming out. You know, you start to restructure the body. The body starts to work differently. The brain, the neuro, um, what, what's the word? It's not synapses. We're just gonna say your brain starts to reprogram. You know, it's, it's gonna start to use the parts of your brain that 
before human science would say we don't use. It's going to activate those areas of the brain. So you can comprehend your field more. You can understand your field. So then it's going to go, are you feeling through your field? Are you feeling with your field or is your brain interpreting your field? You know, which one is it? To me, I feel like in the beginning, your brain is interpreting the field until your body is, until your body's vibration is high enough to be your field. You know, it's going to feel like it's almost downloads you're getting because your body's not high enough to feel like it's coming from inside. It's like just you are your field. And you haven't quite merged with your field yet if we still see the separation of my brain's interpreting my field. Because your field of consciousness is what you really are. It, it's not just a snippet of, you know, your, your brain cell, in a sense. You know, it is a snippet of all aspects of you. You know, it's like you're just going to get a piece, a piece of a, a small reflection of a diamond. You're not going to get the whole thing. Because it's only such a small piece of you. And it's the unconscious parts of you. You would say you're also just bringing up kind of the worst parts of you. That's so when you even look at AI in movies, and it always feels off. When you looked at the when they did it, like we talked about, I touched on it earlier, when they did it in Star Wars with Carrie Fisher, they did it with someone else in Rogue One, the general on the ship, General what, Tarkin. Is his name Tarkin? I think it's what his name is. It was my Star Wars trivia. We'll get tested. Um, it feels off. <laughs> Something about it feels off. Now, you know, anyone could have watched Rogue One and said, well, okay, that... Because I, I was around when the original trilogies were out, you know. So I could have told you when I was, you know, a certain age that that man was probably in his 50s then. And so it was like, he's probably not alive. But if he was, he probably would not look exactly the same. So even though there's a, there's a logic there you could put in, but even if you didn't have that frame of reference to go with to how old this man would be to be in this movie, some people could not pick up on the fact that he was not real. I think for other people you could see, but maybe they noticed there's something off about it. You know, there's something that didn't quite feel right. Something kind of, it didn't have the, it didn't have the nuance to it. And I think you even see this when you see any type of AI in movies, it feels kind of stagnant. It doesn't feel like a full person. And people will say, well, it doesn't have the emotion, you know, of a full, of a full person. It doesn't have the connection of a person. You know, it, it doesn't have the capability of a field. It doesn't have the soul there. You know, it, it, it doesn't have, even though the soul is not in the body, the soul is around the body. And I get questioned on that quite a bit. Because I remember when someone said that to me, I was like, what do you mean the soul is not in the body? <laughs> What's in there? You know, if it's not in there. And it's like, it's not in there. There's too much other shit going on in there. It, it is there, but it's not all in there. And we talked before about when people die, right before people die a lot, they'll get this, you know, this um, kind of this brightening thing where everyone's like, oh, they look great. They look 10 years, 15 years younger. They look so great because the vibration raises the soul enters in and it's kind of overloads the body. It's too much for the body to take. That's why when you go through ascension, it happens over so many years and even though you get to certain, and then there are stages within ascension, and even after ascension, there's still things your body's going to continue to go through because we're always going to be clearing. We're always going to be going on, you know, to kind of do the next thing. We're always going to be doing that. So when you talk about going through ascension and going through soul embodiment, and if you do it all quickly at once, the, the havoc, you know, the confusion. We talked a little bit about mental health. I don't know if we did it on here. But what humans would say was mental health and, you know, people who feel like they, they're not really connected with the world is because kind of a sense you can go too fast. And when that happens, it's confusing. You know, when you're, you're in that multidimensional space and you can maybe feel and see all these aspects of you and you don't really know what's going on. Now, most of the time when you start going through ascension, you start finding people who are going through ascension too. You start finding information that you're drawn to to kind of start to shed a light on what's going on. There were people who agreed, you know, different souls agreed to go through it with blindly, with not, not being attracted to any of that stuff because they had a role to play, you know, in their environment. And, you know, in our human perspective, we take that down and say, okay, that's just mental health, right? They're, they're just off. And in a way, they are off. They're off in the sense of they're not completely anchored in 
to the body. They're more anchored in. They're, they're, they haven't kind of bought it down. You know, they haven't kind of bought everything down into their root chakra. They haven't anchored in anything. They're just kind of all over the place. And they don't have the structure to put it together what's going on. But they were supposed to not have the structure. Because that leads to something else in their environment with other people. You know, we talk a lot about, you know, the different aspect of the soul. And we talk about the planetary aspects. You know, we talk about, you know, Christ energy and God, the God mo molecule and, you know, mermaid energy and all our galactic aspects and all of our, our angel aspects and so many different parts of us. And when you try to kind of piece that out, it falls very flat because it's it's just not the whole it's just not the whole part of the person we don't really realize how deeply we run in a sense i think when you talk about even when you talk about a lot of this stuff people will always say oh that's really deep you know that's really deep that's really kind of in there and to a human perspective it is you know because we're talking about more than just what our physical eyes can see know what we can actually kind of comprehend the brain's going to comprehend everything linearly and that's why it has so many problems with multidimensionality because it can't it can't see the correlation of things it can't see the correlation of how one event you know brings in a whole a whole other things how it sets off different parallel realities how everything starts to bleed over really the first glimpse of that we get is when we we are sleeping and when we're dreaming and that's really our first awakening into what else is going on out there it's not as just simple as our human daily life even though we we kind of want to believe it is we kind of want to believe that's kind of all that's going on because it's simpler that way you know we have too many other things going on that's how when you, a lot of times when we start going through ascension you're going to find a lot of things get removed very quickly because you can't really focus on your journey and have all these other human things you have to kind of disconnect from the human world and whether you do that willingly or you do that kind of just getting pulled out of it you know you you might lose your job you might all of a sudden your relationship's over and you're kind of just kind of setting out there by yourself people you'll see people getting kind of they'll call it cancel culture now you get kind of thrown out of the human realities you know you're not allowed to be there anymore now you have to leave and the funny thing is, it's really a party nobody wants to go to after a while. But when you're at the party, you feel like that's the only party. You don't really realize there's a lot of other parties going on, but you can only kind of feel that one. It, it, it almost goes back into we can only see one outcome. Because we don't have the access to our field yet, we don't have the access to all the other outcomes. We just can see that one. And it's the same thing when we're in our human realities. You know, a lot of times we don't want to leave them until it gets really rough. <laughs> You know, we don't want to leave them till we, we kind of get pulled out kicking and screaming. You know, I don't want to leave. What else is out there? It's like it could be an abyss out there. I don't want to go out there and not realizing that it's way better out there. But it takes time to kind of acclimate to that because it's such a different way to perceive. It's such a different way to, but it's a very organic way. It's, it's a natural way to perceive things. It's a natural way to see kind of what, what is going on, really. Like, why did this happen? You know, if I go back and look at a reality where, where something unfolded, my brain, my human brain is going to say it was because A, B, and C. Whereas if I look at it from geometrically, and I say that geometrically because that's how your field's going to read it. If you look at it from energetically, what moved that reality forward? What was pushing it forward? How did I feel about that? How did I enter into that timeline? Why did that timeline end? Why did I run out of time? Where were the signs the time was running out? Where were the hidden hourglasses, you know, in the in, in the timeline where I knew it was coming to an end? Am I starting to get aggravated by the timeline? I had one recently that came to an end like that because I was getting so aggravated and in a very short period of time, but everything was kind of dialed up to 11 in a reality that one I knew was out of alignment, needed to close out. I was trying to write it. It was one I kind of wanted to write to the end because I had an attachment to someone in the reality. And I did not want to let that go, fearing that if I, I couldn't take that part with me. Or whether I can take that part with me or not, it's still kind of not known yet. You know, I don't really know, can I take that that peace with me can I take that part with me maybe I can't and I have to be okay with that and until I get until I can clear everything 
and the grief around that reality ending the way it did, you know, that reality starting to crumble the way it was crumbling. Can I, will I be able to enter back into it? I, I can't enter even back into discussing to try to lay out a different reality until the whole timeline has time to reset. And, and we've talked so much about giving time giving it space to breathe not so i really don't like the term letting it go because it feels like there's a loss there it's a very human term you know i'm gonna let it go i let it go you know anyone who tells you to let it go has never let anything go they just say that because it's, it's almost them saying it to themselves i have so many people would say that and i was like you've never let anything go it, it's kind of funny because you can kind of hear the it, it has a ring of not being very authentic when people say it so i don't even say it anymore because i know that you really, you just kind of give it space to shift. You know, you, you're letting go in a sense, I guess, if we really want to bring that term in, though I don't like that term. You kind of have to let the timeline teeter out. I mean, timelines end because you're out of time. It's run its course. It can't go any farther. Your vibration has shifted to a point where it can't, this reality can no longer hold. It's not supporting your body. And if it's not supporting your body and it's not supporting your vibration, it will not hold. That will be an absolute every time. If it's not supporting you, it will not be able to stay because it's it's now a hindrance. Whereas before it might have been a support, now it's hindering what you need to do. Can't put your body in that reality anymore. So now if you continue to try, which I was continuing to try, it's now going to get so amped up because your vibration is so discordant to this reality that it cannot hold anymore. And it's going to crumble. And it did. So then you're on the other side of that. You know, you had a reality that crumbled. Maybe four or five, six years ago, I might have just walked away from the whole thing. But now I, I know there is a some open, honest communication that needs to be had to see if the reality can either morph into a different one or I can just take a take a piece or part of that reality with me and let the rest go. That's what my preference would be and we've talked a lot about that i can have a preference on the outcome my preference is i can take the one person i would like to continue to to have realities with with me and let the rest of it go and not really have to deal with any of the other things not really have to play the roles the roles i was playing in the reality anymore just take the piece i really enjoy where there was a human part of me there was that unconscious part of me that was still playing it out and i can see now that i was still playing it out to I didn't feel like I could separate it out in a sense. I didn't feel like I could have a reality with this one person without bringing everything with me. You know, I have to I have to be in this reality. I have to be with all these other people to keep this one. I didn't see another way. And now I'm kind of tasked with, well, if there isn't another way, I have to be okay with that. It's not my preference. I will, and I've said that, you know, to my universe, it's just me. It's just me talking to me. That's not my preference. But if that's highest aligned, then that's how it'll be. Because keeping ourselves in realities where the time is up, where you, you will tell you, you'll get super, super triggered, super aggravated when you're in something that is now misaligned. And, you know, voices, or when I said voices are raised and voices get raised, it's, you don't even have to ask if it's out of line. It's clearly out of alignment, you know. And then you got to kind of piece together why and these are the things we have to start doing when we start getting to the part of our process where we're not just in you know touching on higher consciousness or hitting those places we have to start bringing that down from our crown chakra into our root chakra and eventually all our chakras collapse into one we open up different chakras new chakras but that's what that means we have to start picking the reality apart and saying okay it's obviously not aligned what's going on here you know am i not you know if i am i not leaving the reality because oh, okay it's saving me maybe it's saving me money maybe you know i have this belief i have this program running that i can't i can't have one thing without the other can this be recreated in a different way will it be parts i have to let go of will it be parts i have to grieve i feel like for me it will be but then we step off from there and we have to start really unraveling our realities when things happen. When we have, you know, a reality that people will call triggering or it's just a dispute and you can see that the whole thing's not working anymore. Maybe it worked three years ago. Maybe it worked six months ago. Maybe it worked six minutes ago. And now this shit is so far out of alignment that we now have to look at why. And when you have to start looking at why, this is what... When you, we have to really put on our, you know, put on our, our big energetic panties 
and look at it and say, what's going on here? You know, what is going on? Why is this thing? Why did it morph so bad? At what point should I have said something? At what point did I not maybe want to wait for the reality to reset? I didn't want to have to leave the reality. You know, you don't, sometimes you're in a reality because you don't want to be forgotten in that reality. You know, you had a lot of enjoyment in certain parts of it, but you can start to kind of see how it has shifted. And we really have to be open to looking at that. Now, I want to touch on eclipse season a little bit here because it feels like it's probably a good place to kind of put it in. When we talk about eclipse season and we talk about things eclipsing out, everyone will say, oh, thing, things eclipse out forever. I will say about eclipse, and all our eclipses are inside out, and they don't really affect us anymore once we have, eclipses are here to shift the timeline. It's here to unearth the, what's no longer you can't keep anymore. What's been going on for a while that it's so out of alignment now, you're going to be pushed you're going to have that planetary energetic push now to, to get out. It can no longer be tolerated. Normally, when we keep all our realities in alignment, you don't see the eclipses playing out that way anymore. Just like when we talked about, I think I talked about it on here. I don't know, maybe I didn't. But when we talk about all the planets being inside, different, different aspects of it won't bother you anymore because you've now, you know, all of a sudden Mercury retrograde doesn't have the effect on you because you've worked through every distortion you have regarding that energy or regarding that aspect of you, that planetary aspect of you. So you work through it because that you know, Mercury's inside. So now that I've worked through that, I don't really feel the need. You know, Mercury really teaches us to communicate. And in the beginning, it's, it's going to run havoc, you know, on communication. But once we've learned to have clear and concise communication and open and honest communication, Mercury, you will find, will not be that big of a deal for you anymore because you've now cleared all the places you weren't doing that. So now when you, ha you see Mercury retrograde, not a big deal because we've already kind of, we've worked through the distortions of what was not that, what was not that energy of open, honest, clear communication. Is that's one aspect of Mercury. There are others, but that, that's one. So you can start to see that things that used to bother you don't bother you as much anymore because now we've embodied in that energy. We've embodied in that aspect. Or you're going to find, or and then sometimes you find the other where different things really start to bother you because you can see how misaligned it is from this aspect you have now embodied and you can't keep this anymore. It's just not going to work. You know, it's just too much. So what eclipses are going to do is where anywhere where you're holding on to anything, it's going to quickly take them away. If you're trying to get an end to anything, start looking at in eclipses where the eclipses are for the year and you'll know that's going to be your strongest energy to close different things out. You know, if you're trying to leave your job, if you're trying to break up with someone, eclipse season will cut it quick. Anything that's hanging by a thread, it'll cut it quick. And anything you're not enjoying anymore, it'll cut it quick. But sometimes we have that fear that it's gone forever and, you know, it's just the timeline's over. It doesn't mean the timeline cannot be reconstructed in a higher vibrational timeline. You get a different version of people. But in that timeline, it is played out and it, it might not return. Some things you'll find won't return. Some things might reshape in another thing. But that current timeline we're in is over. And it's now time to see, you know, what, what can go forward, what can't go forward, what's not going to be beneficial to go forward. If it no longer serves a purpose, you're going to find you can't carry it forward, no matter how long you want to. As humans, we carry a lot of stuff in our human consciousness. When we work from that consciousness, we carried a lot of stuff forward that had no purpose. Now, technically, that's going to be kind of a half truth in a sense, because everything's going to have a purpose. Even when you get to your ascension process, things you did as a human from your human consciousness, jobs you had, people you met, they can all come back and play into your higher consciousness realities, just not in the way you thought. Normally very minor characters in your human life will come back and be major characters in your when you're going through your ascension process because it's a flip, right? People that you thought would be in your life, the, these major characters in your human life, all of a sudden they're gone and they were these minor people you met and all of a sudden they're, they're back and they're playing these really big roles in your life. So you're just going to find that it's kind of always going to be all over the place and who's in and who's out. And, and this person was really important then and now they're out. And so it's really, it's kind of the whole script. You kind of have to flip the whole script in a sense. And that's when, you know, when you start trying to go, okay, what do I do here? 
especially when we're just starting to learn how to align realities. And those are really the videos I think people enjoy the most when we talk about the practicality of how do we really look at them? You know, how do I see what's out of alignment? How do I know? How do I know what's going on here? Why did it get this bad? Because we don't, we have some attachment to it. We're trying to get something out of it. And, and every time I go back to one of mine, that's like, wow, especially the one I was in a few days ago, how did it get this bad? How did it get this bad? Is because I was not willing to let go of parts of that reality. So I hanged on to it until it got so out of alignment for my body that it was so horrible to even be in the environment that it was like, I can't stay. You know, now it has to be kind of be revamped. It might mean I have to pay more money. It might mean a lot of different things. But because our body vibration is always going to be the most important thing, we cannot just ascend our consciousness. We have to ascend our body with it. it. Means we have to anchor in and embody that consciousness in, which means we have to live from that consciousness. That's what that means. If we can't do that, and there's anything in the way of that, if we have any blind spots, you know, no matter what it is, whether it be we, we you know, a job we don't want to let go of, even children. You talk about, you know, spouses. You talk about parents. Whatever it is. You'll know where your blind spots are, and you'll know there's just a few things you really don't want to have to to realign, or you don't really want to have to let go of. But those are normally the things that at some point are going to come up. And till now, a lot of this stuff had been able to shift. It was shifting and changing a lot, but it was still able to have stay with me in a reality. And now I have to really look at if that's going to be possible anymore. But if anyone is in that place where they're trying to figure out, can this be possible? Can it stay? Normally, if we're at the part of can it stay, it can't stay in that frequency it exists in. It can't, you can't stay in the timeline of which that reality is playing out. You're, gonna have, you're now being shifted up to a new timeline. If that reality might be there in a different form, it might not be. But before you can even get to the place where you can really look at it, you have to give the reality time to reset. And there's a lot of fear in that. Fear you'll lose the whole thing. Fear it'll just, you know, piss off other people in the reality if you don't get engaged right away, if you don't go back in. As humans, you want to always go back in to engage. We have a lot of story around why we have to go back in to engage because we don't want to lose it. We don't want all these things to go. So we kind of all of a sudden are like, oh, we have to, you know, we have to go back in immediately. I, ha I can't wait. You know, I have to, I have to get back in this reality. And we really have to practice the art of restraint on that and understand that the reality has to take, you has to take a beat to reset. You have to give the whole timeline time to shift. You, you might be surprised what comes next. You might be surprised the aspect of the people you get next. But until I have no emotion around the outcome at all, I will not re-enter into the reality. That's just a guideline I started setting for myself a few years ago because I was I would from a human consciousness still try to go back in there and reset the reality. But the higher your consciousness goes, the higher your body's vibration goes, you start to understand that rushing back in, you're just going to go through it all over again. You're just trying to band-aid something. I can look back over when I was living from my human consciousness, different things I would different friends I didn't want to lose or or whatever. And I would go back in and try to smooth it over really fast. You know, if there was an argument or there was a disagreement because I didn't want the time, even though it was very clear, these people had to go, but I didn't want that. So I wouldn't even give the reality time to reset. I would go back in immediately and try to smooth it out. I'm not doing that this time. I'm going to, you know, in the last few years, I haven't been doing that. You have to give the reset time and you have to and allow it. And if you're not sure, give yourself an external marker to market for you. You know, say when this happens, I'll know I'm at the point I can enter back in. Whether, no matter what it is, you set what it is. You know, whether, you know, I turn on the TV and this movie's playing or I, I hear this song on the radio. Whatever your marker is going to be, if you're, if it's someone you're really attached to and you don't quite trust yourself yet with knowing when is the right time for me to go back in, when is the right time, when will this have reset enough where I can engage these people again and see. And sometimes you'll know you're not supposed to engage at all. And you won't feel, these are going to be for realities. You're really going to feel an attachment to go back in. And probably attachment's not the word. But you're going to have something in the reality that made you, you enjoy. Something in the reality that you, you want to go in and see, can this be shifted at all? Or, or is it really just time to, to close it out in respect for everyone in the reality? And it's not everyone in the, everyone else in the reality is, you know, 
of a different of a lower vibration is it's just we're not we're no longer there's no longer a purpose in the reality we're no longer in sync in frequency wise we're basically you can say you're holding we're holding each other back they got to go do something we have to go do something everything's kind of getting held back trying to keep scotch taping this whole thing together again you know, there's no point to that anymore. There's there's nowhere for us to go anymore. It's played out. There's nothing else we can do here. We've tried every aspect. We've tweaked it in every way. Now it's like it's time to let it go. You're going to know the ones that need to reset because you're going to want to go back in. You might not like the way it was left. And you might want to go back and say, okay, I didn't. maybe I didn't do that great. I know there's some I, I can definitely say I, that was not the best. You know, I did not, I would, I did not do that the best. Can I go back in and fix this? You, you know, and a fix is probably the. Can I go in and do it do it differently? Can I go in from a higher aspect and 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 come come in from my highest place? Can I do that now? And if you can't feel like you can do that, just continue to clear, continue to clear, continue to grieve, and you will know when it feels right. And like I said, if you you still so hung up on it, you say, "What if I don't know?" set an external marker to kind of mark you as, okay, now it's okay. <laughs> now I know I can go back in and, and I've gotten to a pl- frequency wise where I know I can now enter back in. But if you have anything going on at all, any story around going back in or why you have to go in right now, it's just going to shift the whole reality too much. It's going to shift the old reality and you're going to just be in a loop and you're going to go through the whole thing again. Because I can look back on many times I did that and I just really dragged something out. I wasn't even enjoying it anymore because it was done. And there were different reasons it was done, but you still we still want to get something out of it. We still weren't ready. We didn't believe there was another reality. We, did, we didn't believe there was another party going on. We just thought that was the only party in town and no one else is having a party. Not understanding that there's so many more things that we can get out there and do. So let me open. I do want to open the chat for a minute. Okay. It's pretty quiet today. It's been quiet. It's, everyone's on spring breaks, so I think. It's been very, very quiet. Okay. I think that is a good place to leave it today. So, I think I talked about everything I was going to talk about. I think so. I will bring in one more thing. Um, I'm going to touch on it here. Or I might just do a video on it later. Maybe I'll save it for next time. I think I'll end it here. And I...